Welcome to the Hold My Spot podcast. I am Matt, and I am leaving the beautiful, not so beautiful, city of Akron, Ohio, where I saw Emo Orchestra featuring Hawthorne Heights. Uh, it was a really cool venue. It was down at uh, the Goodyear Theater, so it was actually like a theater for an orchestra. Really a cool vibe. Um, they did a good job with set design. Um, it was a little weird being in a uh, orchestra chamber uh, for a punk show, emo show, whatever. Um, and uh, I will say that not a lot of people were standing. Uh, everyone was just kind of chill and uh, relaxing, enjoying the drink, listening to Hawthorne Heights uh, belt out a couple of their own songs and then also a lot of different covers sort of spanning the genre, um, early stuff, 2003, 4, 5, 6, um, from bands like Paramore, um, Fall Out Boy, uh, AFI, um, they did a really good job, um, the arrangements were, were spot on, um, they were great as far as, uh, accentuating, uh, what the band was already playing, uh, with the guitar, the bass, and the drums. Um, it seemed like most of the orchestra was strings. I didn't notice any horns, uh, whether French horns, trumpets, uh, trombones, anything like that. Uh, but they had cellos, violins, I assume a couple were violas, uh, standing basses. I did see an oboe, and I did see a flute. So I guess there was some winds, but not many brass. Um, but anyway, they were really good, and uh, it was two sets divided. It was divided in half, um, so it was 45 minutes, 15 minute intermission, and then the emo orchestra came. The emo orchestra came on without Hawthorne Heights, and um, did a really cool rendition of the Black Parade. Um, they uh, had the words up on the screen. They wanted everybody to sing all night, it was sort of like a sing-along. I mean, it was all of the band's favorite songs from the genre, but it was all of my favorite songs too. So uh, whatever they listened to, I was listening to. Um, definitely loved uh, the selection. Um, so yeah, all in all, a great night. Um, really cool merch too. I haven't seen a lot of merch that I really like recently at these shows. Um, so I was able to pick up a Emo Orchestra shirt that had, um, uh, I guess it was a cello that kind of wrapped around on the side. It was a skeleton playing the cello. I thought that was really cool, something a little bit different. Um, they also had a Hawthorne Heights merch. They had other Emo Orchestra merch. I regret not buying a signed Emo Orchestra Hawthorne Heights poster. That would have looked really good next to my um, uh, Census Fail poster. It was that same size with their signatures. Uh, so I'm bummed I missed out on that. And by the time I decided to buy it, and I wanted to buy their Hawthorne Heights shirt with uh, the tarantula on it, that was really cool too. Um, it wasn't like a tour shirt or anything. It was just sort of like general merch. Uh, but that was really cool. Uh, but anyway, by the time I decided to buy it, sort of during that second act, um, Hawthorne Heights said they were going to be hanging out at the merch booth. So I think all the people that were on the fence about the merch went back there and the line was just kind of wrapped around and uh, I, I couldn't stick around and hang out uh, kind of late to do that. And uh, if you don't notice, it is raining. Uh, so I am driving carefully. Don't worry about me, but it is raining. about a half an hour ride home from this show. Not too big of a deal. Uh, but I had a really cool realization tonight. So I've been a fan of Hawthorne Heights for a long time. You know, they're from Ohio. Definitely been in the scene and the genre uh, since the early days. But I never got a chance to see them. Well, the first time I saw them was last year at When We Were Young, which was like October 22nd. And then I got to see them again in the House of Blues in Cleveland. I think that was in late January, early February. And now 
I've gotten to see this really cool concept that they put together for the third time in almost exactly a year. So I've gone from not seeing them for the past 20 years to now seeing them three times in one, one 365 day span. So, um, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely say that they were one of the best uh, sets at Wind we Young last year. And it just totally made sense to see them now every time that they've come to town. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And the other really cool thing about tonight, and I keep saying cool, uh, maybe I'm saying cool too much, but it was cool, so deal with it. Uh, but the really cool thing tonight was they started, they talked a lot. So that's what miss, that's what's missing from a lot of shows I go to. The bands hardly ever interact with the crowd, like other than, hey Cleveland, how you doing? Are you ready to rock tonight? And then they play, you know, their 15 songs, and they say, okay, thank you, Cleveland, and then they walk off. Well, tonight was different because we got to hear some stories about the early days of Hawthorne Heights. They talked about some of their struggles. They talked about um, where some of the lyrics came from. They had some great stories of when they met some of the other bands from that same era and when they played shows with them. So I really enjoyed that in-depth look at Hawthorne Heights and um, let's see, I don't want to miss my exit. So we'll go over here. All right, good to go. So um, yeah, great to see the behind the scenes thing. And you know, Hawthorne Heights will always have a place in my heart being from Dayton, Ohio, dealing with a lot of the same kind of things growing up and you know, that emo phase where you know, you don't feel like you fit in and Hawthorne Heights always sort of bridged that gap for me. So, um, yeah, uh, anyway, really excited. I got to see them for now the third time in one year. Oh, wait, we're going this way. Akron and the roads. There's either construction and closed down roads or they have split exits going east and west and I don't know where I'm going. So, um, but we're going to make it, not a problem. So anyway, uh, if Emo Orchestra is coming to your town, definitely go see them. I know, I think I've given the, the thumbs up for pretty much every show I see that if they come to your town, you should go see them, but they did not disappoint. Um, I was a little surprised that it wasn't like super crazy packed out. It was busy, um, but it wasn't packed out. And that might be just because it's a new sort of concept. Um, maybe people in emo and pop punk aren't really like into orchestral music, but I gotta tell you, it did nothing but add to every song that they played. So, you know, don't, you know, don't not go because you don't like the orchestra. It's not the orchestra. It's like having 10 more band members on the stage, you know, juicing up all of the songs. It was well worth it. So definitely check it out. Um, also, a huge shout out for Misery's Business. They brought up uh, their social media person and, and who also did uh, like photography during the whole show. They brought this girl up. I think her name was Kay. And she was awesome. She sang the lyrics for Misery's Business. She belted it out. She had a great voice. It lent well to uh, all the music. So um, she really got the crowd going. It was, it was really, really cool. I think everybody loves that song. Everybody loves Paramore. Um, and uh, she did the song a lot of justice. So, um, so shout out to Kay. Or Kate. I'm sorry. Okay. Ugh. I'm really bad. If you guys haven't noticed, I'm really bad at remembering band name, opener band names that I'm not familiar with and names. I'm so sorry. But you did awesome and thank you uh, for singing that song. Anyway, uh, tomorrow I fly out to Vegas. Uh, I am going to the second When We Were Young Festival. Uh, but tomorrow night I have a crazy day. I work. Uh, yes, I work Saturdays. And then um, I go right to the airport, fly four hours, land in Vegas, check into my hotel, 
go right to the Brooklyn Bowl for Emo Night, uh, Brooklyn. Um, so I'm really excited to see the DJ, the special guests. I think there's going to be all kinds of people on stage. Uh, so that's like a post um, show for the first day of the festival, which is tomorrow. Um, so I'll do a review of that. I will try to do a review after that, but Eastern time, it's going to be like 1 a.m. when the show starts and then the show. So I may or may not die um, just from being tired. <laughs> Um, so I may not be able to record that episode, but I will try. Uh, and then Sunday is when we were young, so that'll be all day. Last year I had zero service all day, so don't expect any updates um, live during that. Um, what I will do, probably a pretty lengthy recap, and maybe I'll pull Ethan in to um, maybe do some questions and... Um, kind of work off each other a little bit and make that enjoyable for everyone um, But anyway, that's the lineup. I don't think I have any shows next week for that. I'll be recovering from this weekend um, for a long time um, But anyway, go see emo orchestra love Hawthorne Heights go see Hawthorne Heights um, And I will see you guys soon So thanks for joining me on the hold my spot podcast and I'll be sure to hold a spot for you on the next show